term. What was the, the type of instruction you'd give a jockey? Keep them happy. Put a smile on their face. Put them on a nice rein. Let them be where they want to be. Uh, don't play jockeys too much. When the wind's thundering down that railway side, like Dee Oliver got that windsock put in over there 10 or 15 years ago, it is a concern you need cover. But on a day like today, you don't. You can be wherever. And, and uh, some of those fillies in that race that were restrained early, they could have been handier and put themselves into the race. And it was just a very messy race. But pre-race, they looked immature. They didn't look like Blue Diamond horses. Something might prove me out a liar, but I'm looking forward to having a look at these colts to see if there's a you know big, strong two-year-old there. We'll get your thoughts shortly on that as the horses are now into the yard for the Blue Diamond Prelude for the Colts and Gildings. Horse number one is Run Nan for Tony McAvoy. Andrew Mallion taking the ride here on the son of Muckfee, who's won two or three starts. Yeah, and was good, of course, in the preview behind Longleaf. Uh, that form, I'm sure, will stack up pretty well. Has a little bit to find all the same, but, you know, second up, this prep might be open to that improvement too. Jane, I'm a fan of this colt. How does he present today? Well, he can't really knock this horse physically, and he certainly looks like he's improved a touch. But I think the thing with him is his manners in the mounting yard. He can be very culty. He didn't actually parade before he raced here last start, and he's in the parade this time. But so far, so good with him. Uh, he's behaving himself. To his Ollivander, Chris Simons rides for Ellerton Zara Racing, a son of charge forward. He's got a great chance to win. He's drawn the nice gate. I think he'll park in the right spot. Um, a good debut win and then came out and was unlucky behind Longleaf, let's be honest, in the preview and taken off on the turn, but rallied with the best final 200. Big chance. I think everything he's doing at the moment is really on raw ability. I think um, when he really strengthens up and improves physically, he's going to be a really nice horse, but he's certainly got the ability there. He knows what he's here for on race day. He's pretty switched on. Good luck to Hall of Fame trainer Neville Begg, who races number three, written by a son of Written Tycoon, trained by Neville's son Graham Begg, to be ridden by Jordan Childs. Yeah, I think he's a very interesting run. There's good support uh, in the market as well, and I like the win, albeit on a heavy track. Uh, more um, going back some time now, but look, it was it was a good performance, a natural runner. I think they'll they've drawn wide, but I think they'll be happy to roll forward and written by. And I think it's a quite an exciting prospect. Might be the value. I think he's a horse that um, has uh, strengthened up a touch with his time away. He's not an overly big, robust type of horse, but he certainly looks better today than what he paraded at Sandown. Um, he was quite relaxed at Sandown as well. I think um, he's a horse that's been to the races and now knows what it's all about. Four is Bionics, the son of Hinch and Brook, Damien Layden riding here for Ellison Zara Racing. First up today, of course, had a couple of runs over the spring yeah, in the Inglis and the, the Maribyrnong Plate. And I thought they were both satisfactory efforts, but others made more appeal. I think at this stage in his career, he's quite a nice, well put together type of horse. He is showing a few signs of freshness in the mounting yard, though. Five is Native Soldier, a son of Sepoy for Darren Weir and Mark Zara, certainly the most experienced runner in the race. Yeah, and that's that counts for a lot, uh, the experience, the fitness, and I, I like the fact he's been getting better too, and they might have learned something, uh, not by design last start, and dropped out and rallied strongly, best four and 200 at that meeting. I think this is a horse that's uh, fit and ready to go. He certainly strips fit for this, and he's a horse that's um, manner has really improved uh, the more and more we've seen him at the races, and I guess that comes down to experience, but um, he parades much better, better now than he did a couple of runs ago. Drifting uh, favourite is Plague Stone, 3.60 now out to 4.20 on the VOP for Godolphin. A son of Lonro, Kira McAvoy riding for James Cummings. And was a beaten $1.35 favourite on debut as well. Did plenty wrong, hasn't done that in the trials, has trialled since, gone well, clearly has ability. It's whether or not under race conditions today Plague Stone can deliver what he has in the mornings. Okay, he's a horse that's certainly eye-catching. He's a lovely colour. He's quite an inquisitive horse. He's had his ears forward and been pretty um, pretty alert since the moment he wandered into the mounting yard. Physically, I think there's enough strength there. So Lindsay Park Stable chases a race-to-race -race double with number seven, Sibirate, a son of Sebring. Damien Oliver are taking the ride. Yeah, well positioned, I thought, in a slowly run race. It was an easier race than what it, obviously what it strikes today, but got the win on the board and had a beautiful run there. And I, I, you know, I think we'll get a better line where we're at with him later today, but there has been some specking. Big wraps and a good market move here for number eight, high ratio, a son of Fastnet Rock. Michael D riding for Mick Price, $5 VOP opening quote, now into $4.60. Yeah, nice win uh, going back in early December, giving a little let up and, and you know, clearly that performance uh, when winning at Bendigo has worked out pretty well. So looks an exciting prospect. I think you have to respect the market. OK, he's uh, a lovely big uh, horse and I think he'll continue to develop further. Um, he looks, uh, well, he's got a lot of Fastnet Rock uh, about him. Uh, look, he looks well conditioned for this. He's got 
got some great muscle definition and he's actually a really relaxed type of horse. He was relaxed on debut and he's uh, come back, uh, had that little break away and uh, hasn't altered at all. He's got a lovely nature. Nine is Ben Hercules, the son of I Am Invincible. Craig Williams for the Lindsay Park team. His second on debut behind Mr Schmidt and I thought it was a sound effort but uh, you know a lot of other runners had clearly stronger form leading into this. Tennis Hinch rider, son of Hinchinbrook, Regan Bayless for Archie Alexander. Yeah, finished fourth in that same race with Ben Hercules and for the same reasons, has a bit to find. We move on to number 11, Hal Vorson, uh, Jai McNeil riding for Robbie Griffiths. Yeah, interesting runner. Look, uh, for, for a debutant coming in here, it's, uh, it's going to be some effort, 100 to 1, I think that uh, reflects its chances. Uh, next to touch on is the 13, the running man, a son of Zoostar, Dwayne Dunn for Robbie Griffiths. Didn't mind the trial, uh, caught by Zoostar, you'd expect some to be pretty precocious, but once again, it's a tough assignment coming in here on debut. And 14, Titan Blinders, the son of All Too Hard on debut. Stephen Baster for Leon and Troy Corson. Yeah, I just thought looking at the pedigree might be uh, wanting a, a little bit of ground. I thought the recent work had been sound, but uh, I think a few others might be a bit sharper. How'd you give us your top four? Yeah, really looking forward to this. I think the boys uh, might have the edge over the girls, but we'll have to wait and see what transpires. Uh, I thought Ollivander hadn't done too much wrong outside of that native soldier. Fitness, experience, all of the above, and that can count for a lot, I think, at this stage. Run Nan and written by has been really well supported in the market as well, and I think they might be positive. So, two, five, one, and three, as far as the rest of the team concerned. Let's see where everyone has gone. Uh, Shane is uh, going with high ratio from the Mick Price Yards. Uh, Nick Ashman is with Plague Stone, along with Brent Zarafa, and uh, Maddie Hill also with Ollivander. All right, Jane's had a good look at the Colts. Um, how do they, these line up compared to the Phillies, Jane? Well, I think uh, Peter Moody was uh, pretty uh, honest about his assessment of the Phillies, but I do think the Colts are a little bit more mature than the Phillies we saw in the last race. The horse that I'm putting on top here is the five and native soldier, Darren Weir, train runner. He's got experience on his side. He's hard fit. And as I mentioned, uh, the more and more he comes to the races, the better and better he parades. He's become really nice and settled and relaxed in the mounting yard. And uh, he's a horse that's uh, continued on to progress really nicely through this campaign. So he's on top me. Okay, Plague Stone is on the drift here. High Ratio is now your new favourite. The Fast Neck Rock Colt and the Smarts have jumped on. There's been two outside of uh, outside of High Ratio and Plague Stone that have been specced. Ollivander's holding at $6.50, but written by is one of those. Native Soldier's going to get back. He's holding at the $6.50, but Seberate has had specking and Ben Hercules. Now, these two horses roll forward and sit up on the speed, so punters having to play with on-speed runners here in race three. We have a new favourite. High Ratio's been a good go late. $4.80. Don't forget if you run sec second or third and between uh, races one and four today you get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Good luck for the rest of the day. Graham Big settles up, written by the son of Written Tycoon, who was terrific winning on debut in heavy going. Graham, are you expecting him to be even better on Beth Firmer going like we'll get today? Yeah, no doubt, Shane. He'd never seen uh, any sort of soft ground whatsoever and uh, on the day and uh, you know, to our surprise, that he really han handled it very well. I suppose that's something in his armoury now. We know he can uh, he can do, and um, yeah, no, we think he'll go well on the dry as well. The format of the race worked out quite nicely. Yeah, no, it's been not a bad form race, and uh, you know, obviously uh, he's first up today. He's had a bit of a break, but uh, you know, we think the horse is in good shape. He's had on speed on debut. Uh, what are your plan tactics here? From what is a, a, a wide draw for a two-year-old? Well, he'll just be. I think he'll just be off them. Uh, probably Mick. Uh, Mick Price is also probably roll uh, high ratio. He might be able to just come over and get a card across and just get a bit of cover. You confident? I think he'll run very well. Best of luck, Graham. Thank you. There's Graham Begg. Uh, Hachi, um, good to see that uh, confidence from the trainer. I'd like to get your thoughts uh, last minute here and also uh, Peter Moody on what he made of these two year olds as they paraded. Yeah, well, Moods is right alongside me. Uh, Pete, how did you line up the Colts? How did they look? Yeah, certainly a more mature bunch and yeah. more composed, but I think they've had the advantage. Beautiful breeze out there now versus mm. the humidity the Phillies face, but there's some nice, big, strong horses. Hard not to be taken by Mick Price's horse, high ratio. Big, strong horse. I just don't want to see Mickey D play jockey. She's drawn 13. It's one turn. There's no breeze. Let him be where he wants to be. Graham Begg just scared me, looking for cover. You've only got the one turn, you know. Mm. 
B4 and 5 deep, be happy and keep running into the race. Uh, but, you know, they certainly look more the part than the girls did and, and you would expect a sharper time and maybe more of a viewpoint from a blue diamond out of this race, I reckon. And obviously going, leaving the paddock and making their way down to the start can be a big telling factor as well, can't it? For sure, for sure. You know, if you're looking for the professional in the race, Ollie, Ollivander, uh, you know, nice, neat, compact little two-year-old, didn't turn a hair, not a worry in the world. So, so uh, no, very looking, very much looking forward to seeing how these horses uh, come through this race and uh, see if we can find a Blue Diamond horse out of it. Absolutely, and there is uh, Plague Stone, of course, who's trialled so well. Late scratching as well, please note. Race 9, number 6, Just High for Luton, has been taken out on Vet's advice. So uh, scratching later in the day, Shane. Thanks, Hutchie. Great insight there from both yourself and uh, Peter Moody. It's tremendous to have the 53-time Group 1 winning trainer on our coverage today. The Blue Diamond Prelude for the Colts and Geldings at Group 3 level. We've seen some high-quality horses win this over the years. Uh, Flying Artie was a Group 1 winner subsequently in 2016. Uh, Rubik in 2014 now making a name of himself as a stallion. Uh, Sepoy in 2011 won this race. Uh, down to the likes of Bella Spree in 2002 and the mighty Lonro in 2001. They're loading now for race number three here at Caulfield. His man. Moving forward here for this Colts and Geldings prelude. Moving forward, Native Soldier is one of the first in with Hel Vorsen and written by Ollie Vander goes in in close with also Hinch Rider. His bionics about to come along with Damien Lane. Bionics about to come along and also Plague Stone who adds the uh, extra dimension of coming from a, a Sydney race, the Golden Gift back in November, the Lonro Colt with Karen McAvoy in the saddle, Titan Blinders who was uh, a little bit anxious in the mounting enclosure now comes forward, Seberate awaits his turn with also the running man Plague Stone and High Ratio Equal favourites on VOPs at $5, written by $9 into 6 Ollivander, $5 to 6.5 as Plague Stone goes in. The running man out behind the gates with the rideless Hel Vorsen. Hel Vorsen's uh, rider, Jai McNeil, was uh, the first in the barrier, still waiting for his charge, but will be one of the last to load, in fact. Ben Hercules goes in. Usually up on the pace, we've got the running man and also High Ratio, who was impressive on the race start to date at the Provincials Wednesday fixture at Bendigo. Now quite reluctant here is Hel Vorsen. Quite flighty out behind the stalls. And now jockey Jai McNeil has jumped away from the barriers. Meantime, the other's standing pretty well in there. Native Soldier's been in there for a little while now. Stands quite well. Next to Run Nan. Now here's the running man. Now you think uh, Blue Diamond jockeys, you think Dwayne Dunn, don't you? And uh, Dwayne's on the running man here. A roughly at $80. And high ratio to complete the line as Hel Vorsen has been locked and loaded. High ratio goes in. And they're ready to run. 1100 race three. Gates are back and racing. Run down from a centre pen. Jumped away quite well. Written by out to fast out wide. Shows pace with Hel Vorsen. And also high ratio. Bionics the inside of Plague Stone as they settle. From Ollivander about seventh from the running man native soldier. Hinch Rider picking up ground on the inside from Ben Hercules. They were followed by Titan Blinders run man. And at the end of the field is Separate and Deep. Hel Vorsen is the leader at the 650 by a neck high ratio. A length and a quarter away written by in third stalks the pace two and a half lengths away to Ollivander followed then by Bionics Plague Stone the outsiders making up some ground from Hinch Rider Native Soldier then the running man Titan Blinders well back is Run Nan with Separate and Ben Hercules into the straight Hell Vorsen and High Ratio at the 250 written by makes a line of three Plague Stone a length and a half off those written by goes to the lead from High Ratio Plague Stone Native Soldier late down the outside written by with 100 metres to go in front from Plague Stone who's trying to dig in but written by is game and written by wins by a half plague stone two lengths native soldier then separate run none further back titan blinders back behind those the running man high ratio got the stitch ben hercules and then well back in the field was olivander with hell vorsen hinch rider and bionics
written by Jordan Childs for Graham Begg. The Colt by Written Tycoon out of Yao Chin. Two from two after winning on a heavy track at Sandown. But sat right off the two front markers. And uh, even though it was able to have a nice passage behind them, presented at the top of the straight and had to fend off Plague Stone and has been very gritty at the end. It is written by three, defeating six Plague Stone, five Native Soldier up for third, Severate will get the fourth ahead of Ran Nan, and then it was a gap to Titan Blinders and also High Ratio. Now the race time was 1.04.98. 1.04.98. So it's a quicker division. Fifth in at number one run, Nam. Sixth was number 14, and that was Titan Blinders. So written by good effort, adaptable from the wide gate, and a thrill, I'm sure, for Jordan Childs to be right in the thick of it here in uh, the two-year-old action. A half length, a length and a half, three, six, five, and seven three six five and seven to the running of race three repeating that news from uh, just earlier we've got a crucial late scratching in the last race nine number six just high for Luton at 137 vets Dean Pettit I'm sure Geordie Childs is very happy lovely ride by Jordan Childs well Jordan things worked out perfectly from you an awkward gait but slotted nicely traveled well relaxed nicely showed a re really good turn of foot he's an exciting colt yeah he is um I think he's got quite a bit of class and obviously he drew wide today but he jumps out of the gates well and we were three wide but only around the one, one corner and he hit the front a little bit soon and I reckon there's still a bit more to come of him. He was pretty soft on the line. Let's hope there's more to come because uh, the Blue Diamond's only a couple of weeks away and if you can draw a nice skate in that you know he's going to be really competitive. Yeah that's it, the horse is going well and the Grey and Bedge team are doing a great job. Um, I was had a bit of problems with him in the barriers and shout out to go to Snowy and Shane and Tom, Thomas Stockdale, they've done a great job with this horse. Congratulations. Thank you, cheers. Got a very happy trainer, Graham Begg, with me. Graham, this horse has got so much ability, but clearly he's got a lot of issues too. He hasn't been the most straightforward horse for you. No, Shane, look, we haven't been really able to train the horse properly. Uh, both he starts leading up into his first season. He hasn't had a perfect preparation because of his bar barrier manners. But um, we got on top of him now. Shane Stockdale and young Thomas has done a very good job with the horse. And also the boys on the gates here, Snowy and all the guys. And... Um, it's just great because I think he's a pretty serious horse. He went into the gates early today, that was by design? Yeah, no, we found putting him in early, getting on top of him and, uh, and then the jockey obviously gets off and then gets on him in the gates, but uh, he's pretty good once he gets in, it's just loading up. Uh, what, on face value, what's impressed you the most about this win? His will. He's got great determination, the horse. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, gallop, trial, whatever, he just wants to hit the line. He's a real race horse. No doubt this is a pretty special moment because, you know, this horse bred by your Hall of Fame father, Neville, and, and the whole family's involved. Yeah, that's right, exactly. And the mare was a very cheap mare. I think he only paid a couple of thousand dollars for her. It's the scone sales and everything she's had go to the track's been a winner. Now she's had a Group 3 winner. So, yeah, no, he's, he's, he'll be chuffed. Will we see you back in two weeks for the Blue Diamond? Well, we'll see how he pulls up and I'd say that every likelihood... Um, you know, obviously we've got ambitions of going to Sydney. We'll just work it out. Well done. Thank you. Graham Begg, victorious with written by a terrific win of the Blue Diamond Prelude uh, in 104.98. As we head back to you, Hutch and uh, Peter Moody, uh, that was a terrific win. It was a terrific win. Moody's he said free race. Well, I hope, uh, I hope he just lets him roll. That's exactly what he did. I think Jordy might have listened to you. Yeah, it was the best thing that ever happened to him. He didn't find cover because he goes back and costs himself that couple of lengths. You know, no breeze, one turn. He, he didn't have to worry about it and he got the job done. Little disappointed Mick Price is cold. I thought he folded up a little bit late there at the way he presented pre-race. But, uh, you know, all credit to the winner. Uh, sat on the pace, worked and got the job done. It was tough and uh, one and two probably got away from the rest a little bit there. And Plaguestone kept on really well to the line, didn't he? He did. Um, you know, it, maybe he's the one to improve. His first run down here in Victoria, he's got two weeks to sort of settle in and acclimatise and, and, and improve to the diamond now. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they progress. And unfortunately, we're not going to know until we see them here in two weeks' time in the yard in front of us just to see what they've taken out of it. Yeah, some uh, more than others. Oliver Ander was off the bit a long way at it. It's finished well down the field. Stand by with the stewards' report regarding uh, that galloper anyway. But, uh, well, that's uh, the wash up from the boys as well. Adelaide is standing by. Let's head out to Adam McGrath.
guys like Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've just seen a top ride from uh, Jordan Childs, a gutsy win by a very exciting colt written by and a triumph for the Begg family. Time now for the presentation for the Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Prelude for two-year-old colts and geldings. And that was a very impressive win by written by. To do the presentations, I'd like to welcome uh, Melbourne Racing Club committee member Roger Donison, as well as Matthew Lim from Ladbrokes. Please welcome Roger Donison to start proceedings. Thank you very much, Nathan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Prelude for Colts and Geldings was a Group 3 over 1,100 metres and was the second of such races today to be sponsored by Ladbrokes. Ladbrokes, as you know, offers a wide range of sports betting opportunities to their customers. In their commitment to the Australian public, they promise value, product innovation, depth of markets and a superior user experience on the web and through mobile apps. The Melbourne Racing Club once again thanks Ladbrokes, represented by Matthew Lynn. Wholeheartedly for its great support of the day and the Blue Diamond series in its entirety. We congratulate all associated with the winner, written by, on their success in the Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Prelude for Colts and Goldings today. The owners, Neville Begg, Partner Syndicate, the trainer Graham Begg, and the jockey Jordan Childs, gutsy ride indeed, as Nathan said. And we extend our best wishes to all of you in your pursuit of the Blue Diamond glory and the destination in a fortnight's time. And if now, it's my pleasure to introduce Matthew Lynn to come forward and present the 2018 Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Colson Geldings Prelude Trophy to Linda Begg, representing the owners. Matthew Lynn. Thank you, Roger. And uh, as, as Roger and Nathan have both said, uh, a terrific, tough performance by written by and a, a great ride by Jordan Childs. We're just hearing from Graham that he trained written by his father, written tycoon, and, and I think we saw some of those qualities today and, and hope to see the same in a couple of weeks' time for the Ladbrokes Blue Diamond. I'd like to congratulate the owners and I'd like to call Linda Begg uh, as representative for the Begg family to collect the trophy. The Melbourne Racing Club, the sponsorship of Ladbrokes, is what makes racing. Uh, on behalf of the Begg family, we're delighted to have won today. My father's in his mid-80s and gets very excited.